Who else is feeling good on a Friday? We all are, as the Lions are 1-0. and Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Friday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Friday, September 8th into Saturday, September 9th. How great is it going to be this weekend on Sunday to sit back and watch all the other teams play, watch the Packers and Bears bash each other's heads in for three hours, and the Lions are sitting with the best record in football, the lone undefeated team. I know it's funny, but still. To get to chill on Sunday following last night's one-point win in Kansas City is just the best. We appreciate you listening wherever you get your podcasts. Please subscribe to our Lockdown Lions YouTube channel. We're up to 10,000 views for last night's post-game pod after the win. We appreciate appreciate all of you for checking us out wherever, again, you get your podcasts. Following us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Lockdown Lions, on threads at The Real Matt Dairy, uh, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page, and again on YouTube. Got to say hello to our everydayers that are out there. And I got to shout out a couple of everydayers who hit me up on that Twitter machine last night. B Nuss, Nussbaum, Greg Gilbert, Brandon LaFave. They're like this one pride uh, crew, those four. Uh, they're like brothers. They might be brothers um, for all I know. But guys, thanks so much for checking us out and uh, being a part of uh, what we do each and every day here on Lockdown Lions. Coming up on the show today, we got to talk about the national love that Detroit is getting. We got PFF grades uh, to recap the top five and bottom five on offense and defense, which we do every year after every game. We will do that. And some things that I need to be corrected for next week when the Lions face the Seahawks at Ford Field. Uh, Locked on Lions today, though, proudly brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL and use code, all lowercase, LockedOnNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, so the Lions are basking in the glow of last night's 21-20 win over Kansas City. First of all, you know what I did not mention last night? Two things. Number one, uh, the fake punt in the first quarter took some giant stones from head coach Dan Campbell. Dan I mean, it was a huge, huge call in the game. Uh, Lions were backed up uh, on their own 17. They had just gone three and out before. And on a fourth and two, the direct snap to uh, special teams captain and local legend Jalen Reeves-Maben. And he goes for three yards and gets the first down. Number one, terrible job by the Chiefs special teams coach to not be ready for that because, as you know, Dan Campbell's had seven successful fake punts in three years. But what a call by Dan Campbell. Get the offense back in the field. They go down and score on the St. Brown touchdown to go up 7 nothing. But I never really mentioned that last night on the postgame pod. And again, it was midnight. But still, great play call, great execution, the aggressiveness. You know the offense loves it because Dan has faith in them uh, that they'll come back out and score. You know the defense loves it because the head coach is thinking, hey, if we don't get this thing, I have faith that my guys will get a stop and maybe hold the Chiefs to a field goal. So that was an awesome an exciting play in the game that uh, uh, was excellent execution as well. Second thing I did not mention, then I'll get to the national love that the team is getting, but Tracy Walker did not play a single snap on defense last night. How about that? Not one. Tracy Walker was a starter. Tracy Walker got hurt. Um, got a big contract uh, last offseason, but still kind of a, a glue guy. But last night, mostly, the Lions were going with Jerry Jacobs, Cam Sutton, Brian Branch, Kirby Joseph, and C.J. Gardner-Johnson all night. And Tracy Walker was the odd man out. Um, should tell you what they think, not about Tracy Walker, but just how highly they think of Brian Branch. And then when Branch got hurt, Will Harris came in. So Walker played nine snaps on special teams last night, and that's it. Did not play one defensive snap. Um, And again, I think that's a testament to Brad Holmes knowing that, look, we have a good safety in Tracy Walker who started as a free safety and has been with this organization, and they like him. They re-signed him. 
um, before last season. But if they felt like they could upgrade and they were saw that the Packers were sitting there at, with pick 45 in the second round and they said, we got to get up and move up to get Brian Branch. And they did. And Brian Branch, all he did last night was return an interception for a touchdown, um, make plays. And now he's getting a ton more reps and starting basically in their sort of four, two, five defense over Tracy Walker. So look, Tracy's got an ultimate professional. He will stay ready. If they need him, he'll be out there, but that's pretty good depth to have in the secondary when you got a guy like that, not getting a single snap um, on defense. I, I promise you this, uh, just to get up today, head over to the gym, uh, see all over the TVs in the gym. They're, they're talking Lions on NFL Network and on ESPN and all the other all the other channels. And just to see the love that this organization is getting right now as a fan, I'm sure it just, it knocks your socks off. It, it's like, it's a whole new world and ball game for this organization to have this kind of love and support um, nationally. I mean, people are impressed with what the Lions are doing. And people are, hopping on the bandwagon and, you know, whatever whatever you feel about, you know, certain people nationally talking about the Lions, but they've been the talk of the league and they're backing it up, all right? And I'm going to talk about corrections in a second. This organization can do better. They can play a lot better, right? There was some luck that went into last night's game. I get it. Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey didn't play. Was that lucky for the Lions? Of course. Those two guys could be out there next week. It's possible. All right, there was some luck involved, but there are also some things that the Lions are doing in making their own luck. And a lot of people nationally are talking about it, and that is the blocking. All right, football sometimes you talk to old school football coaches and they'll tell you blocking and tackling is everything. You whiff on tackles, you swing and miss, you can't block anybody. Your quarterback's going to get killed, your running back's going to get killed. Everybody talked about the Chiefs interior of their offensive line and Joe Thune and all these guys. Creed Humphrey's the greatest center ever. Let me tell you something. The Lions held, outside of Mahomes scrambling for 45, 47 yards last night, the Lions held the Chiefs to, what, 15 carries for like 40-some-odd yards last night on the ground? Blocking and tackling. The Lions up front did such a good job with their scheming, with their blocking, all right? That you know, if you're if you're following on Twitter, or you're just tooling around on social media, and you see some of these uh, these folks that that you know give you the all twenty two view with the with the camera, you know, in the end zones, and you see some of the schemes, you watch how Ragnow pulls and smashes people. You watch Sam Laporta. Sam Laporta has played one NFL game. He's already a better blocker than T.J. Hawkinson. He is. And on a couple of those plays last night, the Jameer Gibbs uh, end around the. David Montgomery touchdown. Laporta sealed his man. Great footwork. Didn't hold. Didn't grab. And had a couple of great blocks to free the running backs to do their thing. That's how you win games. Right? Lions didn't, the Lions offense scored 14 points last night. 14. That's it. And one in Kansas City. But what's cool is, is that a lot of people are saying nationally, wow, they are for real. This wasn't just some cute thing. Dan Campbell and kneecap biting. No, they're, they're, they've won nine of their last 11 games. So all this, these accolades that they're getting nationally, I think they deserve them. Now, if it goes to their heads and they have a disappointing season because they have to play 16 more games, we'll call them out. But right now, it's fun to listen to big-time prognosticators and all these analysts talking about our team uh, in this positive light. It's, uh, it's, it's very cool. So shout-out to the Lions for taking care of their business and, and getting that opportunity. All right, some things to correct and PFF grades. We will get those coming up next. Uh, we got to tell you about our friends at Nutrafol. Now, listen, all right, you don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. All right, look, thinning hair, weakened hair, it's tough. All right, it's not the greatest thing ever for men. But if you think losing your hair is inevitable, forget it. You got to take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol's science-backed hair growth supplement for men. 
Did you know that 80% of guys will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? That's right. It's normal. But it doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of thinning with Nutrafol. Nutrafol is number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Their hair growth supplements use physician-formulated, natural, science-backed ingredients. Their drug-free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code LOCKEDONNFL. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men. Enter the promo code LOCKEDONNFL. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code locked on NFL. All right, so I mentioned before about some corrections for next week. Uh, we will do that coming up next. I, I want to talk about some PFF grades, though. Our friends at Pro Football Focus, we do this each and every Monday throughout the season, but because the Lions now are the primetime Lions and they're playing on Thursdays, they're playing on Mondays, they're playing on sa- uh, Saturday. We're going to do this the day after each and every game. We love our friends at Pro Football Focus, pff.com. Trevor Sikama from PFF is going to join us on Monday on the show. Shout out to the great Dave Selfaro, who always hooks us up. All right, top rated players for the Lions and bottom rated. So we'll do top five and bottom five. The highest ranking Detroit Lions football player uh, during last night's 21-20 victory over the Chiefs. How about them Chiefs? Yeah, they're 0-1. Uh, Halapulavati Vaitai, the right guard, with an 88.4 grade. Impressive stuff from Hal Vitae, a guy we didn't know was going to start until moments before the game last night. Number two is Jameer Gibbs. <clears throat> I've been telling you about Jameer Gibbs. Only 19 snaps last night. That is not going to be good enough. 70.8, the 78.8 grade for the rookie from Alabama via Georgia Tech. Jared Goff came in third at 76.5, batting third. Uh, Panay Sewell fourth at 75.5, and Frank Ragnow was awesome last night, a grade of 75.1. Those are your top five offensive performers from last night's win. Bottom five, I think you probably know who's the worst. That would be Marvin Jones, uh, 35.1, the fumble, a couple of balls off his hands, uh, another drop. Not the greatest night for Marvin Jones wearing number zero. It's weird seeing Marvin Jones not wearing number 11. Hopefully he bounces back. Uh, Brock Wright, the tight end, was second lowest with a 38.8. Jason Cabinda, fullback, 54.0. David Montgomery, a little bit of a surprise, 55.4. And James Mitchell, 59.5. But again, Lions didn't go all that deep with their offense and with all their players. They've got many more players on defense on their roster than they have on offense. But those are your bottom five Lions offensive performers from last night's win over the defending world champs. On defense, number one on the top of the list, guy that played the best game, according to PFF, Aleem McNeil, grading out at a 78.6. Big guy was clogging things up in the middle. Maybe didn't have his name called a ton, but played a good game. Derek Barnes comes in second. PFF loves Derek Barnes. Uh, 75.0. Josh Pascal, huge stop on that third and one play. What was Andy Reid doing there? You put Mahomes in the backfield and have the uh, Sky Moore or somebody take the snap. That was stupid. 73.5. Pascal made a huge play on that third and one. Charles Harris comes in fourth at a 70.4. Um, and then fifth was CJ Gardner Johnson, who scored a grade of 70. Those are your top five Lions performers on defense, according to Pro Football Focus. Bottom five, he played 14 snaps. Malcolm Rodriguez, 31.9. Uh, Will Harris, 42.9. Only three snaps, though. Jack Campbell, 53.2, although I thought he played pretty well. Uh, Cam Sutton, 57.9. And Jerry Jacobs, 59.8. But again, the really only lo- really low scores the all night 
were Rodrigo and Marvin Jones. Everybody else scores were fine. Um, and look, the Lions played a good game. They really did. Solid, sound fundamentally. And again, there will be some things that this team definitely needs to correct, which I want to get into coming up next. But, you know, these were games that for years the Lions lost. The Lions could not finish, right? I mean, what, what was the losing streak at on the road when it went from Patricia to Campbell and then it stayed at camp? 13, 14, 15 straight road losses. Their last two games, the last two road games, they won at Lambeau and at Arrowhead. Like, wow, dude, that's pretty good. That's not pretty good. That's really good. So uh, Seattle is coming to town next week. We will um, talk about some corrections that uh, I think the Lions can do. We will do that uh, coming up next. But first, we told you earlier about our friends at Prize Picks Daily Fantasy. It is so much fun. And uh, look, you know, you play prize picks, you can win some cash. It's the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. Really, last year I got into prize picks and it was great. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and you place your entry. All right. Testing your skills on prize picks this football season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you got the skills, you can turn 10 bucks into $250 with just a few taps. This week on prize picks, why not select Saquon Barkley for more than 60 yards and uh, Lamar Jackson for more than one passing touchdown? Do that, and you'll win. Prize Picks offers promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday each Tuesday. Their discounts select players' projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Right? People love this. It's fun. Go up against your friends. Tell them to check out prizepicks.com. Go there now, slash NFL. And use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. That's awesome. Do it. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. It is our friends at Prize Picks. All right. So, what do the Lions have to do better on Sunday against Seattle in the home opener? Again, they get ten days off. Uh, number one, the only real big injury that I saw last night was Taylor Decker hurt his ankle and was in a walking boot after the game. Um, Dan Campbell told the media that Deck, as he calls him, is a tough SOB. So you have to figure that with 10 days, Taylor Decker's ankle will be okay, but probably precautionary that they had that they had him in a walking boot. Other thing to mention, too, is Mike Tirico from NBC is getting blistered on social media for saying that there's an asterisk uh, next to that game due to the Chris Jones, Travis Kelsey thing. Here's the thing about Mike. Okay. Known Mike Tirico for, oh God, 30 years. All right. Going back to Syracuse. Like when you do a game and you got to do pregame and postgame and you're talking for three and a half hours, occasionally you're going to say, put your foot in your mouth. You're going to make a mistake. I don't think Mike meant asterisk for the lions. I think he meant it's an asterisk mostly for the chiefs because they didn't have two of their best three players. All right, so cut him some slack. It's a really good announcer. I don't think he was dissing on the Lions. He lives in Ann Arbor. Uh, he was talking about Aiden Hutchinson like all game, and oh, there's Hutch's parents and all this, so go easy on him. Uh, some corrections. Number one, and I said this last night, and I will say it again, Jameer Gibbs has got to be on the field. I get it. He's a rookie. You've got veteran players at other positions. David Montgomery's a veteran player. Josh Reynolds is a veteran player. Marvin Jones is a veteran player. Khalif Raymond's been around. Amon Ross St. Brown now is a veteran. I think mean, the Lions felt like that was their best path to winning, was having the experienced guys play more than the inexperienced. All right? But to me, if this team is going to go to the next level, win the division, and win 12, 11, 11, 12 games, Jameer Gibbs has to touch the ball more. He's that explosive. And there were series last night where he was on the sidelines all the time, and I didn't get it. You know, third and three, quick bubble screen. Oh, it got broken up. Why? Get Gibbs in space. I loved when they were pitching him the ball in the backfield. I loved it. Had him running jet sweeps. Let's go. That is correctable. And the Lions have to do that. They've got to get Jameer Gibbs in there. 
I also want to see more of John Kaminsky. I know he kind of started last night, was rotating a bit. Romeo Quara, healthy scratch, was inactive, which is interesting. But Kaminsky can play inside or outside. And he just, man, he played a good game again last night. Um, and I thought that that was something that was was really, really good. Um, other corrections? Look, you know, you're going to have some communication issues uh, on that back line of the defense on the secondary because these guys haven't played together. But the more they play together and the more they gel, the better they're going to be. And uh, I just think it's not so much a correction about the secondary than just experience together. But all in all, how can you complain about the secondary or anybody on the defense when they only allowed 20 points, two touchdowns, two field goals to the best quarterback in the league in Patrick Mahomes? That is um, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty good. So can't wait for the home opener next week. Again, Trevor Sikkim is going to join us Monday. Everybody have a great weekend. Enjoy the games. And uh, how great is it that the Lions can just kick back, relax, and uh, bask in the glow, like I said, of that 1-0 start. This has been Locked on Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts for this Friday edition. We are back again on Monday.